On today's episode of Hackbyte, we're going to detect the log4j vulnerability in web applications using a log for shell canary token. Log4j is a Java-based software that makes it easy for applications and websites to store data and also generate log files. The software was recently found vulnerable when one of its built-in features allows an attacker to execute random commands on web servers by simply pasting a single line of code in online chats or random text boxes. This exploit called log for shell is found to affect millions of devices across applications like Minecraft, AWS servers, and even one of the Mars rovers. In my last video, we took a look at how this exploit works and also just how easy it is to compromise one of these systems that's running an older version of Log4j. However, this required a little bit of setup and also required us to set up an LDAP server in order to execute this malicious code. But if you're just looking to test for vulnerable websites or applications without any of the nonsense, we're going to take a look at a free online tool called Canary Tokens, which lets us do exactly that. Using this online service, we'll see just how easy it is to set up an online tracking link that notifies us every time a vulnerable website is detected, and also how we can automate this process by using Canary Tokens. To follow along, all you're going to need is a computer with internet access. This video was sponsored by PCBWay, who offers amazing PCB manufacturing to quickly and easily bring your PCB projects to life. Check out PCBWay.com to learn more about their PCB, 3D printing, and CNC services. We're going to start by setting up a log for shell canary token, which you can do over at canarytokens.org slash generate. Now, a canary token is essentially an embeddable tracking link that we can disguise in form factors like a custom URL, an embeddable image, or even a Microsoft Word document. Now, when a victim attempts to interact with this document or perhaps view the canary token bugged image inside of a web browser, this will trigger canary tokens to grab information about the user's operating system, web browser, or other attributes of the computer they're viewing from, and send this information over to an email address that we can provide in the following web form. This makes it extremely easy to gather reconnaissance and also set up an alert system that gives us insight to technology running on the victim's computer, as well as possible vulnerabilities or attack vectors. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the log for shell canary token and see just how easy it is to automate testing for websites and applications that are vulnerable to the log for shell exploit. In order to set up this canary token, all you have to do is just provide your email address and also a reminder note. Now, for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and use the following temporary email address. And I can also just set the reminder note to log for shell test. Now, just as simple as that, we've activated a log for shell token that's tethered to our email address and will alert us every time the following exploit string is successfully passed through an application or a website that's running a vulnerable version of Log4j. At a high level, Log4j is a Java-based software that runs on websites or applications and usually will store information like failed login attempts or program crash logs. However, since Log4j also includes a feature that allows it to log information from an external website or another Java application, hackers have found a way to make it log information from their malicious website instead of a legitimate one, which can contain code that allows them to take over the vulnerable server. If you want a more in-depth explanation of this attack, Check out my last video where I demonstrate how to utilize the log for shell exploit against a vulnerable application and also gain a reverse shell by crafting a malicious Java payload. So now that we've generated a log for shell exploit string, we're gonna see how we can use this to test for websites and applications that are running vulnerable versions of log4j. So in this demo, I'm gonna show you how to use a derivative of Cosmer's log4j shell proof of concept, which I showed you how to run in the last video. And you can find my demonstration over at Alex Lynn slash log4j shell proof of concept. So to get started, all you have to do is just copy the address of my repository and open up a Linux terminal where you can type git clone followed by the address of the repository. So as you can see, I already have this um, downloaded to my computer. So all I have to do is just go ahead and change directories over to the downloaded repository by typing cd log4j shell proof of concept. So once you're inside of the repository, all you have to do is simply build the vulnerable web application using the Docker program. So this proof of concept contains two different demonstrations, one of which is the Python demo that I showed you how to run in the last video, and also the vulnerable web application, which is going to be a mockup page that we can use to test our exploit string against. So in order to build this application, we're going to be using a program called Docker, which you can install just by running sudo apt install docker. 
and this should set you up. Now, once you have Docker installed, all you have to do is just build the application by typing sudo docker build tac t, followed by the um, name of the application, which is going to be log4j shell proof of concept. And then we're also going to direct this to our current directory by typing dot. So once it finishes building the application, which should take a second, you can go ahead and run it just by typing sudo docker run tac tac network host followed by the application name, which is going to be log4j shell proof of concept. So after running this command, this should fire up the web application, which you can open up in a web browser. So I can do this just by simply navigating over to our local host, which is where it should be hosting the vulnerable website, just by typing localhost and then the port that it's hosting it on, which you can see is on port 8080. So if I go ahead and navigate over to localhost at this port, you can see we have this mockup finance login page. So typically in an application like this that's using log4j, it's going to attempt to log user-generated fields or inputs, like for example, the username, IP address, or other metadata about the device that the user is viewing from. So if we check out the actual source code of the project, you can see that it first reads these parameters, the username and password, and also has the following hard-coded values for admin and password, which is the successful login. So if I go ahead and log in with these credentials, which are admin and password, these are allowed to pass through the application and we're greeted with a successful login page. However, if we were to input different credentials and I were to fudge up the password a little bit, you can see that we're greeted with a different text here, showing us that we were not able to successfully log into this page. Now, in the original application, it would log the username if you were to input the wrong credentials, but I've modified this a little bit to log the user agent instead if you were to provide the wrong login. So typically, every time your web browser is to make a request to a website, like for example, this login form or another website that you're trying to interact with, sometimes these websites will log information about the device you're viewing from, which is typically provided in the browser user agent. So if I go ahead and check out, for example, what my browser user agent is at the moment, you can see this reveals information about the operating system, the type of browser I'm viewing from, and even the window manager that I'm using, which is X11. So usually these headers that are appended to every request you make to a website can be pretty revealing about your information. And sometimes you might wanna change this to perhaps obfuscate the information about the device you're viewing from, or in our case, be able to pass a malicious string through that some websites might attempt to log. So in the demonstration that I've created, I've simply changed this to instead log the browser user agent, which I'll show you how to change in just a second. So in order to change your browser user agent, you can usually configure this inside of your browser settings somewhere. And on Firefox, you can find that under about config. So in order to change it, all I have to do is simply overwrite the user agent parameter by typing general.useragent dot override. And then I can go ahead and just modify this string to be the exploit string instead. So if I go back to our canary token and copy the generated exploit string, I can simply paste this inside of my browser user agent and my web browser will now identify itself as this string here. So if I go back to this user agent identifier website, you can see that by reading the header requests that's made to this website, we now have the following string instead of the actual browser and operating system identifying itself. So for a website like this um, mockup finance page that's attempting to log the device that we're browsing from, this is instead going to log the exploit string and potentially execute it if the log4j infrastructure is set up to um, log these sorts of commands or string inputs. So I can go ahead and just log in as admin or even provide a different username. And if I just type an arbitrary password and attempt to log in, you can see that it's actually having a little bit of trouble redirecting to the next page since it's currently trying to log and process the string. But if we check on our canary token, we should get a hit since log4j should have logged our exploit string. So if we go back to our canary tokens and go to manage token, this should allow us to see if our canary token has gotten any hits from websites that have tried to process our string. So you can see the web browser is actually struggling to redirect to this website since my browser user agent is still set to that exploit string. And since canary tokens probably has a filter set up for that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open this up in a new web browser for now. 
and just paste the um, Canary token link. So if we open this up, you can see that this token has actually been triggered three times, probably resultant of the um, vulnerable application trying to redirect or refresh the page. But you can see that we've gotten a few hits on our Canary token. And if I click on view history, we can actually see the location of where these hits are coming from. But since I'm using a VPN, these locations are actually a little bit scattered. Now, if we check out some of these hits, you can see that it has successfully hit with the memo log for shell test. We were also able to successfully extract the host name from the computer that processes this string, which is spooky. Now, if I go ahead and open up my terminal, you can confirm, in fact, that the host name of the computer that I'm running this from has the host name spooky. Taking a closer look at the source code, you can see that we create the following Java logger object, which uses the log4j library in order to log the browser user agent every time we input the incorrect credentials on the web form. Now, log4j will typically expect this user agent string to contain things like the browser information, operating system, or other metadata about the type of system that the user is browsing from, as you saw earlier. But since we're instead passing it the following log4shell exploit string, log4j actually sees this as a Java variable and attempts to execute it. So based off the way this is formatted, you can see that it tells log4j to use the JNDI protocol, which is Java naming and directory interface, to make a request to the following LDAP server, which you can see points to our canary token link. So an LDAP server will typically return information or Java code in the form of something called a class. And when log4j receives this information back, it attempts to download and then execute this code internally, thanks to the lookup feature that we talked about earlier. So if the following server here was pushing out malicious code, this means that a system running a vulnerable version of log4j would attempt to execute this code and potentially put itself at risk, and potentially allow attackers to execute arbitrary commands on the compromised system. However, since the Canary token server is not set up to return any Java code back when this LDAP request is made, you may have noticed earlier that while trying to submit the incorrect credentials, the request wasn't able to entirely go through. However, just by making a request to the Canary tokens website at the following unique URL, we were able to prepend the host name of the vulnerable server as a Java variable and successfully exfiltrate it to our Canary tokens monitor. If you want to find the original source code for this project, you can check that out on Cosmos GitHub repository, which I'll link in the description below, or you can also check out my repository for more instructions on modifying and building this web application for your own proof of concepts. Log4Shell Canary tokens make it extremely easy to deploy an alert system that lets us know when vulnerable sites or applications are detected. Thanks to sneaky data exfiltration techniques like prepending the server hostname to our Canary token URL, this allows us to gather basic intelligence on vulnerable devices or websites and easily scope out possible attack surfaces. This can of course be substituted for other data, and in future episodes we'll take a further look into how Canary tokens can be used for gathering reconnaissance and also deploying honeypots. If you enjoyed today's video and have suggestions for upcoming topics, ideas, or other demonstrations you want to see covered, let me know in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at AlexLind. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.